There's a problem that needs to be dealt with in space, isn't there, in, our, in the solar, outer solar system? Uh, yes, so you could uh, start the story by saying that we have been making, or at least trying to make, very detailed studies of the distribution of objects in our solar system. It makes a lot of sense to try and map the local part of the universe and so we have tried to identify all of the smaller planets all of the uh, the small rocks which are going around and in the process of doing so there have been some apparent anomalies which have been noticed we've long thought there's been a planet beyond the orbit of Neptune. So obviously that was first thought to be Pluto and then all the Kuiper Belt objects were found but now in the Kuiper Belt there's this strange shepherding of some objects. This grouping of these bodies out there can't be explained very easily. You have to have something that's like pulled them into those orbits. And one option might be that the sun had a flyby of another star a few million, billion years ago, and that might have pulled them out there, but that would have had other effects as well. So one of the options is that there is another very heavy planet out on the edge of the solar system that's essentially doing this shepherding. So if we think about the large planets like Uranus and Neptune, and these are sort of maybe like, call it 50 astronomical units. The Earth is one astronomical unit. And so this planet would lie at 500 or, or 1,000, so really far. Not only that, but it's a very large planet, if it is a planet. The mass of this thing needs to be typically around five to 10 times the size of the Earth. Has this part of the sky where we've got this clustering of debris got a name? And has this, has this made up planet got a name? Uh, yes, so uh, the class of objects that we typically talk about are called uh, trans-Neptunian objects because they lie way past Neptune and the planet or this object typically goes under the name of Planet Nine. What myself and my collaborators were interested in were asking, could this be something other than a planet? Essentially what you need to do is add a new massive object in the outer part of the solar system uh, and make it hard to see since these are the two characteristics we know of Planet Nine. And a few candidates sprang to mind immediately. We know there should be this class of objects in the universe called dark matter. Dark matter is essentially, at least we think it should be, some set of particles which are very difficult to see. So if you could form clumps of dark matter, these things could reside at the edge of the solar system if they get caught through the evolution of the solar system. Another possibility, which is the one we focused on in the actual paper, was the possibility that this could be a small black hole this particular class of black holes called primordial black holes. I cannot tell you how much I want this to be a real thing. Like, the idea that the solar system could have its own little, like, pet black hole, like, it would be the best present like, the universe could ever get me having a black hole in the solar system. And the idea is that perhaps the reason we haven't found Planet Nine, this planet that could be at the far edge of the solar system, is because it's not a planet, it's one of these primordial black holes, so black holes that weren't formed by supernova, but in the very early days of the solar system when you had all these random fluctuations going on and there might have just been enough matter to clump together there and form a black hole. So as you vary the size, uh, the mass of the black hole, the size varies with it. Uh, and in particular, um, a planet mass black hole is of uh, interesting uh, property that it typically has the mass scale of ordinary average objects such as a there you go a watermelon a watermelon size black hole would roughly correspond to a mass of say five to ten times the mass of the earth which is remarkable if you think that you compress the entire mass of the earth into such a small object five earths in, into that object precisely one other thing that led us to think about this black hole is we also found one other complementary anomaly in experimental data um, so one thing you can look for uh, when looking for primordial black holes is you can look for what's called gravitational lensing signatures. This is essentially looking for when a star goes a little bit brighter and a little bit dimmer because of a massive object passing in front of it. Typically these are used to exclude the existence of primordial black holes and there's been an experimental program for the last couple of decades which has done extremely well in showing what mass primordial black holes can't be dark matter. Um, what was interesting in uh, 2020 when we actually sat down to think about exotic objects in the outer solar system was there was a tentative experimental anomaly that said that there could be earth mass primordial black holes that we're seeing doing this brightening and, and dimming this uh, uh, gravitational lensing in the galaxy and so one thing that got us very excited is that we found uh, these gravitational lensing experiments were pointing towards 
five to 10 Earth mass primordial black holes. Um, the fact that there were these gravitational anomalies in our solar system that were pointing towards a five to 10 mass object. And we thought, this is a, a, a very curious coincidence that these two things are pointing to the same mass range. So you could simultaneously explain two experimental anomalies at the same time. And when you see something like that, then it becomes worth writing a paper and, and just pointing, pointing the separate communities towards um, this work, which is identifying similar phenomena. This paper that you've been involved with is saying, maybe there's no planet out there, maybe there's one of these primordial black holes about the size of a watermelon just hovering out there, shepherding these trans-Neptunian objects over the other side of the solar system. Precisely, and it's a very reasonable hypothesis from the sense that all you need to explain these strange anomalies is a massive object. There'd be distinct ways of looking for these primordial black holes, and that would de depend a little bit on the additional physics. So one thing people have proposed is that, for instance, if asteroids were to come particularly close, to one of these black holes, then you would actually see the asteroid breaking up around it, and this could release some visible light from that impact. You could ask what happens if I have some dark matter and a class of primordial black holes, which is what we anticipate, and what happens is you tend to form a dense ball of dark matter around the black hole. This is very interesting because in principle, as you increase the density of dark matter, you can actually generate observable signals from it in a large class of scenarios. But these signals don't show up as visible light. They can show up, for instance, as high energy gamma rays. So one way you could uh, identify a black hole that was in our solar system, or in fact, a, a, a population of black holes in our galaxy, is to try and look for these high energy gamma rays. And that's precisely what things like the Fermi Lat telescope do, for instance. So if they found it tomorrow, what do you think the reaction would be from the astronomical community? Would every telescope suddenly be pointing at it? Would every mission be sending a space probe to it? What do you think the reaction would be? I think the reaction would be one of doubt at first, like found it, how have you found it? Have you, have you really found it? Because if we found it, it would be through this, probably this gamma ray annihilation. So there would be people going, are you sure we can't explain this in another way? I don't think there'd be full acceptance if it was found tomorrow. Sending a probe would be an interesting one because I don't think we'd be around to see it arrive if it was something there that it could arrive to. So it would be one of those missions that would be for the next generation. But the I mean, can you imagine the amount of physics you could do if you had a black hole on your doorstep? I think they'd build a space station there like they have at the <laughs> South Pole. It'd be like, it'd be like they'd build, a, they'd build a, a, an observing station right next to it for a thousand years. Yeah, you just send loads of probes to orbit it for, yeah, evermore and just observe what would happen and set, send stuff in and just watch it get spaghettified and test general relativity, our current best theory of gravity. In a, in a way we've never, ever been able to before. I think that's just why, yeah, okay, it'd be really, really, really cool for the solar system to have a pet black hole, but at the same time, like the physics that it would open up if it were true would be incredible. You know, as scientists, it's, it's drilled into you that, you know, anything that you do, it has to be, you know, completely bias-free, it has to be independent, you have to approach it completely with no conceptions of what to expect going in, and I'm just too biased. I want there to be a black hole so much in the solar system that I could never, ever work on this. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be impartial enough, let's put it that way. It seems quite easy to just sit here and think, hmm, maybe it's a black hole. I'll write that down and publish a paper. But I've had a look at the paper and it looked, it looked quite technical. You haven't just sat there with your friends and dreamed up something and thought, yeah, that would be cool if that was real. There seems to be some rigor to this. Well, I mean, when you write, want, if you want to write something like this, you need to be able to make a testable prediction. Uh, and so uh, what we were trying to do is we were trying to say, there is this great experimental program looking for a planet in the outer solar system, but it need not be a planet. There are other exotic objects that we believe exist. In fact, we have great experimental evidence that dark matter should exist, for instance. And really, if this object's not a planet, then this is an opportunity to use some distinct experimental techniques to try and look for new classes of object. And so to really try and narrow down on what is going on in the outer solar system. What would you bet on if you had to bet your house? A planet or a black hole? I know you've written a paper about a black hole, and, but you're not saying you're definitely right. What, what feels more... I would say, I would say there's a layered, there is a layered hypothesis here. Um, the most um, extremely beneficial 
uh, but hi most highly speculative scenario is that it's a black hole in the outer solar system. Um, the Tamer scenario is that there is a new planet to be discovered, which would already be an extremely exciting discovery. Um, but again, even that is still very speculative. Um, there is also, we all, as, as a scientist, you always have to think about um, things such as selection bias. Perhaps we see these clusterings because um, it's easier to see one part of the sky. Or it's just a snapshot in time, and yes, it probabilistically is highly unlikely for objects to cluster, uh, but uh, it can happen. It's the probability of this is, is not zero. Um, there are good arguments for thinking there's an object in the outer solar system, but the uh, let's say the, the tamest solution is that we're just, we're just seeing some unu something that's unusual uh, and uh, perhaps there's just some small extra body in the solar system. So, but I think the, the real story here is, uh, is that uh, there is still a lot to learn about our solar system currently uh, and it's really important to invest money to sort of understand the structure and history of the solar system, especially going beyond Neptune. Uh, but, and also there are many unanswered questions in terms of early universe cosmology and fundamental physics. Um, and what's interesting is if you can tie some things together, then not often you can make progress on, on um, interesting points. Be sure to check out the video description. I've put a link to James and his collaborators paper about whether or not Planet Nine may be a primordial black hole. And while you're there, there's also a link to Becky's latest book, it's called A Brief History of Black Holes, well worth a read. And while you're at it, we've got a whole playlist of black hole videos from 60 Symbols, I'll include a link to that as well. If, uh, and only if, the background flow exceeds the speed of the perturbation. I don't know if you can see it, can you see oh, yeah, it? I see it.